how would we get the Cartesian equation from this out of these guys? Have a think. What would you do? It's a bit of a weirder example. You might need to think back to when we did um, auxiliary angle. The Cartesian equation, this, we can get from the parametric equations up here. So see how x is defined as cos theta and y is defined as sine theta, like that. So, so these are the parametric equations for the unit circle. Um, all I would do is I would square this and square this. Like, see, I, I'm going to have to square them, right? So x squared will be cos squared. y squared will be sine squared. Now, what do I do with those? You, you just add up the left-hand sides. That gives you this. And you add up the right-hand sides, which gives you this. You, you see how it comes out. So I'm just trying to highlight that for you because parameters are not a weird, crazy idea. You've been dealing with them for a long time. You just haven't met their names. Okay. Now, I'm going to return to these probably in period three or four, uh, four after we review the tune exam. These are very specific. We, I didn't give them to you by coincidence. I gave them to you because they landed right here. There are lots of different parametric equations that will land on the same Cartesian equations. So I'm going to show you a bit later on in period three, four, why we choose these ones. But for now, I just want you to get comfortable with the idea of parametric equations as compared to a Cartesian equation. So can you go up, open up your textbook? Uh, we're in 9D. And have a look at question five. Okay, now we're going to skip right along. The first few questions in this exercise are really, they're pretty rudimentary. I sort of already talked you through the basic ideas. So we're just going to jump right in. I just showed you a few minutes ago how to convert from parametric equations, equations which have parameters in them, like these guys, into a Cartesian equation, an equation with no parameters to be seen. So have a look at this. Let's name them, shall we? What would you like me to do if I wanted to get towards a Cartesian equation? Yeah, Nini? Okay, great. So if I find out t here, if I make t the subject, then that makes it really easy to pop it into here and the parameter is gone by such a point. Then we just need to simplify a little bit. So let's do that with equation one. Um, what will I do to make t the subject? What exactly will I do? Yeah, I think I'll add t to both sides, I'll subtract x from both sides. So that gives me t equals 3, take away x. Is that alright? And this can go straight into equation 2. So when you have a look at this, uh, how's that look? Happy with that? You can see that parametric equations, depending on how you write them, can give you a circle, can give you a parabola, can give you a straight line. In fact, pretty much any shape you can come up with can be expressed in terms of a parameter. Why would we do this? Well, like I said, we're going to come back to this one, which is the primary reason we're interested in this. Can you have a go at B? B has some trig in it, which is similar to what we had a look at here with the unit circle. What could you do with it the way we approach the unit circle? and turns its parametric equations into a Cartesian equation, the way we did it here will be helpful to you. So have a go at B, and if you've got an idea, call me over. So would it help if I wrote everything like that? 
That's one way to go. That's an overall strategy that we usually try. However, I will point out that the problem with this is, um, so um, on the weekend, my daughter had to make a diorama of the solar system, okay? She's in year three, yeah? And so she had to paint a box um, black because it's space, right? So she's painting and then she gets them on the floor. Now, I said to her, okay, well, you've got to clean this up now, right? And so what does she do? She goes and gets like baby wipes because she knows that's what we used to like clean up random stuff. And as she does that, there's like, you know, there's paint. There's like a glow of paint here, right? And she like gets the baby wipe and then she's like, like this, like. And then she picks up her baby wipe and then she looks at the paint and it's like 10 times bigger than what it was before, right? And then she's like, hmm. So I said, you took a little bit of paint and you've now made it a lot of paint. So for those of you who are trying to Turn this, for example, into sine theta on cos theta. Like, okay, but now you have two thetas to get rid of, not one, right? So it, it's not a bad idea, but what you'll find is it's probably more trouble than it's worth. Okay. Okay, so here's my suggestion to you and an overall strategy here which will help you with your trig identities as well. Because in some ways, this is just a trig identity problem. It's just not dressed up as the normal kind of left-hand side, right-hand side. Okay, it's a little more obtuse to try and work out. Um, I want you to remember what happened over here, okay? We know that we can get sines and cosines to cancel out with each other so long as they're squared, right? Why is it that they're squared that makes it useful to us? What fact can we use? We, we can use the Pythagorean identity, right? Namely, that sine squared plus cos squared equals one. You remember this? Well, there's a whole family of these Pythagorean identities. Um, this one just has sine and cos, but there's one which has tan and sec in it as well. How do I get from this one to that one? What do I do to this whole thing? Because I never remember what it is. Which one's plus one, minus one? I'm going to divide by cos squared, right? So when I do that, what this turns into is uh, tan squared plus one equals Okay, good. So my aim is to try and use this thing. Now when I have a look over here, I've got tan there, I've got sec there, but they're kind of muddled up with all this other stuff. So how do I get away from that? Well, let's give these names, we probably already have. What I'm going to do is before I square equation 1, I'm not going to do that just yet because when I square this I'll get 1, I'll, got, I'll get 4 tan squared theta, but I'll also get 4 tan theta in the middle there, right? So it's like what I was suggesting, um, sort of relating to you with my daughter and her paint. It's like it just starts to go everywhere, okay? So the real problem is because there's two things here on the right hand side. It's a binomial, so that's why when you square it, you get more and more terms, just like we know in binomial theorem. So if it's a problem having two terms over here, let's just not, not have two terms there. Like it's the same equation, yes? But clearly this is going to be better to deal with because when I square both sides now, which is what I'm going to need to do, I don't get more thetas turning up. One term on the right hand side being squared is still one term. So now let's square. I'm not even going to expand this guy because I doubt I'll get very much out of it. Okay, what do you think? Does that look okay? Hmm. Um, I can divide through by four as well because then, oops, I don't need an extra bracket there. Then I've just got a single tan squared theta, and I know what I can do with that in a minute. Okay, so let's call this guy 1a. What shall I do with 2? I, I can do a similar thing. I can get rid of that 4 on the right hand side by adding it to both sides, which gives me that. That's a really messy 4, sorry. Okay, there you go. And now when I square y plus 4 squared, I might as well divide through while I'm at it. How's that? Are you happy with that? So now I know that this plus 1 equals this, right? So I can say, let's have a go at this, um, 1a plus 2a. What are we going to get? Um, I've got x minus 1 all squared on 4 y plus 4 all squared on 9 equals... Now, I want you to note this because I did this wrong, but I can fix it and you can help me do it, right? When I do this, because adding equations doesn't seem like that bad an idea, it worked over here, right? I get this statement which is true, but it's not very helpful. 
Can anyone see why? Yeah, look, I don't have tan squared plus sec squared in this identity, right? I suppose if I were to rearrange this, I would have tan squared minus sec squared. So this is no good. No problem. This happens all the time. You do something, you're like, oop, I've hit a wall. So you just back up a little bit and say, well, maybe subtraction is a better idea, right? Yeah, that also works. Like as in there's, there's lots of different ways that I can go through this. So yes, that would be, I mean, it's going to amount to the same thing, I think. But that's fine. I'm just going to do what means less writing for me. So now that's equal to what? What's that equal to? Uh, look carefully. That's negative one, isn't it? Right? So I've got this. Oh, 9 equals negative 1. Do you agree? Now... I'll probably do one more thing just to tidy this up. I don't like the fractions there, so I can multiply by something to get rid of all the fractions. 36 will do it. So that'll give me a 9 here and a 4 here equals negative 36. How's that sound? Yeah. 